Hi, Mickey. Hey, Bob. I really liked your podcast with uh, with Horgan. With John Horgan? On quantum, on uh, the problem with quantum physics. We pretty much got to the bottom of that, I'd say, and left no question unanswered. I, I thought, well, I don't think you got to the bottom, Bob, because, you know, the the attempt to reconcile, uh, I guess, Einstein's theories of gravity with quantum mechanics has yielded string theory, which posits that if you if you zoom in on the cell, uh, if you zoom zoom in on the nucleus, you zoom in on a pro molecule, you zoom in on a proton. If you zoom in on the proton, you would see v very very super low levels of microscopy. Uh, you would see strings, and the strings are vibrating. But yeah, and the, and the different particles are actually, I think, different frequencies of vibration on the springs. And, and yeah. Strings in reality, if this theory were true, yes, but I think. I heard I heard a podcast, not yours, but another one that was fed to me by iHeartRadio while I was driving around the country. Mm -hmm. And it said that the problem with uh, string theory is in disfavor because while you can prove, you can use mathematics to show that the strings would generate all the right results. A lot of other things might generate the right results. So it's not clear that it should be strings. And having driven around the country, I've decided that the, the most ubiquitous thing in the universe is receipts from garages, which are littered all over my car. And so I'm, I'm proposing an alternative to string theory, which is the universe is made of little receipts little and, sheets. and what, what we think of as different particles are actually just different barcodes. They're, no, they're just little garage receipts. They're tiny, tiny garage receipts. And they actually can vibrate if you've ever heard the song. Oh, so we're sticking tiny. with the vibration part of the string theory and just replacing the well, strings with a little, garage they receipts. They make a little noise like if you ever hear mm -hmm. the song Tie Me Kangaroo Down, there are people wow. playing, playing a big piece of cardboard and it makes these noises. So um, I think this is a valuable contribution that I've made. Uh, I, to, I the really, theory of everything. you know, if I were a physicist, I think I, I, I'd look for another line of work because I think you pretty much, uh, you s settled the matter. And you know, the great thing about that is one complaint about, uh, string theory is there's no way to test it. But if it's garage receipts, I mean, those things are everywhere. There's got to be a way to test that, right? Uh, you know, so that's absolutely. I mean, with enough dimensions, I think the garage receipts will. That's the other thing about well, string uh, theory is like will prove everything. Like a whole bunch of dimensions. That's a, and when you ask him about that, and you go, "Wait a second! Like I'm having trouble with more than three, like maybe four dimensions. I, I consider time a dimension. I can get there, but like ten, twelve. What is this?" And they say, "Oh, don't worry, they're really small." Like yeah. what, what is? What really? does that mean? They no, say things like small. that, or they say they're in little loops. Or like, what does that mean? That that's not a dimension. That's a fucking loop. You hardly notice them. They go by so quickly. Yeah. The, uh, so, you know who had 14 dimensions, Bob? Um, Eric Weinstein? Yes, the first in, in the geometric fastest Eric Weinstein reference in our podcast history, I believe. We can do better. We can get to the <laughs> Weinsteins even earlier. You know, I spent last night uh, talking about the Weinsteins uh, for a while. I, was, I, I taped a podcast with the uh, Decoding the Gurus guys. And, huh. uh, I mean, I mean, they're going to be on my, po this was for my podcast. And, uh, we wound up after an hour or so stumbling into Weinstein territory. And then, you know, several hours later, you know, my wife dialed 911. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't quite understand how uh, the Horgan thing was good. Well, Horgan is like a force of nature. And, and, but you also seemed very well versed in all these issues. And and are you are you that prepared for all of these podcasts? Like with the gurus, are that prepared? And I'm happy to say I did zero preparation for the John Horgan thing. Did you do any preparation for this today? What I'm happy right to now? say I did none. No, okay. I did think a little. Like I thought, here's what I thought. I thought I will say to Mickey, "Hey, Mickey, my condolences on your failed California referendum, which you had hoped." would replace Governor Newsom with a crackpot talk radio ho host, thus transforming American politics in accordance with your values. But it doesn't seem to have worked out. No, it didn't. California is a tough nut to crack, as I discovered uh, myself. Uh, when it, you're, when you, you're, your storied run for the Senate is what we're referring to. Senate. The, the problem with it wasn't that uh, that I failed miserably. 
Although I did better than all but four candidates in the recall, Bob. But um, how many? Uh, how many? Not that I would notice. In, how many candidates were in the recall? Forty. Not that I would notice. But um, I got a higher percentage than John Cox, the previous Republican candidate for governor. Um, but uh, I wouldn't boast about that because it's completely ridiculous. But um. But your election was, wasn't a recall. You didn't run in a recall election, did you? That's why it's ridiculous. There were forty candidates, and it was a, it was a, and okay. I was running in a three candidate race, so it's easier to get five percent. The problem was the problem was that I only got five percent. The problem was I got zero traction among Democrats. <laughs> can't zero. imagine. Can't imagine why. Uh, and 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 they they're just. They, it is not a neoliberal state. They're not in the Charlie Peters sense. They are not ready for. Uh, you know, for for a Republican Democrat, no, I don't for, think they for are for getting tough on the border or, uh, or anti union rhetoric, which I sort of awkwardly paired together in my campaign. All my support came from Republicans and Independents, and they didn't vote in the primary, so I was fucked. There's there was no room in the Democratic the, the short way, but there was no room in the Democratic Party for immigration dissent or union dissent. Uh, and that's unlike mm. other states. California is really a state apart. Mm-hmm. But yes, the, 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 I, I thought it would be an Eric Cantor like wake up call that would torpedo, it might be, that would torpedo. You, you mean this, re- this referendum? Yeah. And it looked like three weeks or, or ago recall. that it might be that. And then all of a sudden the Democrats, uh, turned around, uh, turned out their vote. Uh, the, the conventional wisdom, which is probably true, is by making it a national election. About Trumpism and casting Larry Elder as a Trump surrogate. And Elder made a, a horrible mistake, which is he backed into uh, endorsing a sort of stop the steal type position. Originally, he had said, uh, this is buried. I was wondering, what did he do that was merited this charge? And it's buried deep in a bar in your, in a, uh, sorry, a, a rich Lowry column. He had, he had said, well, Biden won fair and square. And then there was outrage from the base, and he took it back. He said, I want to mulligan on this, you know, and, and he shouldn't have taken it back because that let them tar him with this uh, stop the steal thing. What, what uh, I think what, what – Tar Elder? Elder, Larry Elder, yeah. But you were on, on, on the stop the steal bandwagon. As I recall, last week you said to me after voting in the referendum – you said, but how do I know that my vote was counted and didn't didn't enter the labyrinth of democratic fraud or something, right? Well, I I think there's paranoia, uh, and I think direct mail-in ballots, which the Democrats are never going to let go of now, uh, uh, increases paranoia, and and and, uh, and that's a bad thing. If you go and you vote in person, the, the, you're you can still be paranoid. What happens to my ballot now? But in, in direct mail, you don't know where the ballot comes from. I mean, if they, it's as if they, they took the ballots behind a screen and then came out and, and said, don't worry about what happens behind the screen. It's none of your business. It's all fair. Uh, and that just increases paranoia. Well, there's always, there's always a behind the screen though. They're always, you always have to trust them in the end or else come up with good reasons not to. Well, but you have, you have election observers at the counting of in-person ballots and it's a pretty cut and dry. It's a fair system we can come up with. The, the least paranoia inducing system and direct mail. You're not present when the ballot is voted. That's the problem. Okay. Or, so you were, or you, transmitted. You were hoping that an elder, uh, victory or Newsom loss would, uh, impede the progress of the $3.5 trillion Biden thing, Correct. right? And it, in fact, it's provided a little boost to it, I assume. Plus there's this. Okay. To complete the like, uh, 180. That we're doing here, the jujitsu move. Uh, it uh, is. It's, 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 it, t- admitting you're wrong isn't doing a 180. I, I'm not done yet. Okay. <laughs> the uh, here's an idea I had. Uh, there was a piece in the New York Times about how Newsom one of one of Newsom's great weapons was that they turned Elder into Trump, right? Because he was talking to Trump this game. And, and, and so they could say, look, the Trumpists are coming after us. And that rallied the troops. Okay. Now here's a headline I want to give you about Biden's $3.5 trillion economic plan from the New York Times. I believe 
former Trump aides to spearhead $10 million campaign against Biden economic plan. Senior Trump officials Larry Kudlow, Linda McMahon, Brooke Rollins, blah, 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 push, quote, save American coalition opposing Democratic proposal. If I'm Biden, I go all in on this. It's the dot. It's the Trump people who are coming to stop this. We Those must stop very- them. Those aren't very Trumpy Trump people. They're all the anti-tax cut conventional Republican economists. Brooke you, Rollins is a Brooke mean, Rollins is a Brooke Rollins is a Koch brothers, uh, you know, free market type. She's horrible. Do you know how much more nuanced what you just said is than messaging of this kind gets? It I doesn't can't believe matter. The Mickey. Only, I can't believe matter. they're the only group with former Trump people in it who are against this uh, this bill. All the better. All the better. Man, that seems like a. It, it may be true that, that you know that seems like a weak straw, but I didn't think you could cast Larry Elder as a Trump Trumpist either. So I've been wrong before. Okay, if this isn't enough of an asset for you, how about AOC's dress with uh, what did it say on the back? Tax the rich. Tax the say? rich. So there. Game set match. Game set Except match. They're, they're throwing they're throwing tax, rich taxing proposals overboard. Uh, uh, you know they they've given up on the stepped up basis uh, where capital gains aren't taxed at death. The the heirs just uh, inherit inherit the asset at a stepped up basis, so they don't pay taxes yeah. on the gain. Uh, they've uh, they've uh, they've kept the carried interest loophole, which is how. Wall Street hedge funders uh, escape a lot of taxation. Uh, and uh, so it's really only the corporate tax rate. And people don't really know who pays the corporate tax rate. It likely does not just fall on the rich. It falls on everybody. Uh, so it, the, the the redistributive power of what Biden is proposing is is already sharply limited. Well, one problem we face in America is that now that both parties have a ton of rich people in them, like neither party can really muster the resolve to raise taxes. And so we're going to fall deeper and deeper into a deficit pit. Uh, well, I think he's going to get away with some raised taxes. And, uh, you know, that leads to uh, people proposing a VAT as we have it, as they have in Europe, where the the tax is sort of barely felt, and it gen- just generates vast sums uh, for the uh, for the state to spend. That's why it's traditionally been opposed by the American right. Um, the the California recall did disabuse Republicans. Isn't that a Marco Rubio word? Disabuse. The disabuse he- disabuse Republicans of two. I think. Uh, uh, misguided campaign uh, pitches. One is that they could uh, just just run on the vaccine, run on against va- uh, Biden's vaccine mandates, and that sure didn't work in California. In fact, the opposite happened. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Newsom ran on an, a pro-vax, pro-lockdown uh, uh, regime that he's sort of been running, and uh, and and it was popular. Now California is different than the rest of the nation, but. I, I, you know, polls show that the vax mandate is not wildly unpopular. It's less popular than I thought, but it's still not unpopular. And yeah. the second, uh, there was a second one. I have to look at my notes. A second uh, takeaway from the, from the second, recall? A second bogus Republican theme. Uh, Should I entertain the, the masses while you, uh, Search for your notes. Are you doing a Joe Biden impersonation? Is this is this is this like Joe Biden no, at a press I just, conference? I have a note card it, here somewhere. No, it's I am actually that addled. Uh, why why are you addled? Did you did you uh, not take your Sudafed, or did I you take too much? Sudafed. Oh well, I'll get I'll get to it. No, that's um, fine. This is great TV. Keep going. Yeah, sure. Uh, it is the top. We're seeing the top of your head. <laughs> it's it's uh, brilliant TV, in the literal sense of the term, brilliant, bright, shining, glossy. I polished uh, it. What? <laughs> I polished it. Um. Oh yeah, that 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 uh, they could campaign on stop the steal. Well, didn't can... we talk about stop the steal? You really didn't take your Sudafed, did you? Well, 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 Elder got 
there are Republicans who will say, uh, you know, you mobilize the base by talking about stopping the steal. Mm -hmm. And it sure didn't work for Elder. Uh, and it's, it, it's sort of such an obvious loser. It's hard to believe anybody seriously proposed it, but they were seriously proposing so, running against the vaccine. But, but you mean he was, he was saying stop the steal about the Trump election or about his election or both? He was already saying Both. stop the steal about his own election before it happened. No, mainly – no, his main – that was sort of bogus. I mean he basically – he 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 had a, a sign – he had a – he had a website that said, you know, uh, that it was obviously supposed to be posted after the election saying, saying you know, uh, you know, report – please investigate the twisted results and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. But it, it somehow got posted before the election and the press seized on it. But yeah. previously he'd done the stop the steal with uh, the Trump election. Uh, and that's the more serious thing. It's, mm -hmm. I think he's perfectly, he's allowed to be paranoid about his own election and say, if you see something, say something. And, you know, here's a form. If you're, you know, they, they, what, if you see any irregularities, report them. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed. Uh, you're allowed. And, uh, but, but saying that, you know, Biden wasn't legitimately elected. He'd said that earlier, and I think that was the big his his big fuck up. It just seems to mean you're reduced to running these crackpot radio talk show hosts. I don't know. I don't know. He's um, a he as as crackpot radio talk show hosts go. He's, he's one of the better. He's pretty sophisticated. Yeah, and because in part because he's a libertarian, so he's not going to. He's not. Coming at Trump. Well, that's from a what. See, that probably should have been his perspective. That should have been his his slogan. Larry Elder, a crackpot we can live with. That's what they should have gone with on the, have, on the big TV buy. He should have done something to somehow, you know, he didn't. He was going to win his his race anyway. The key is beating Newsom. The key to him getting into office was beating Newsom. So he could have separated himself from Trump more. And still won his race, and it wouldn't have given Newsom the target to run against. The key is to oppose Newsom, not to, mm -hmm. uh, not to, uh, you know, not to elect Elder. Elder had it sewn up. He could have sacrificed. So he could have let the base vote for somebody else. Hmm. Okay, as long as they voted against Newsom, that's fine. As actually, that's a good strategy. What he needed was a, a Trump, a real Trumpist candidate to turn out the base that wasn't him. Okay. And then he could have said, I'm Larry Elder, I'm not Trump, and won. Uh, and yet the base still would have turned out to vote against Newsom. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I think of this? You could have been that person. You should have volunteered for duty. <laughs> um, that I would have lost the one friend I have out here. I didn't know you had a friend. Who is that? You know, is there somebody I know? Uh, yeah. Um, I should have a word have with him. If he's still your friend, I should have a word with him. Who is it? It's a she. Nancy? No. I I haven't Na talked to Nancy. Nancy. Is turn Nancy has turned on you? I don't know about Nancy. I haven't talked to Nancy for years. I assume she's still my friend. Wouldn't bet on it. Uh but <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it either. Um So the, uh, uh on on this COVID thing. Yeah. The good news is it, it does seem pretty clear that the case rate here has plateaued and it started plateauing. I mean, it was hard to say because there was this weird statistical aberration apparently owing to Labor Day and it took several days for it to get straightened out. But it looks to me like it's been straightened out. Well, I just mean we're past it. So it still looks Florida weird thing? in the stats. You're taking into account the Florida problem? No, what's the Florida problem? The Florida problem, we talked about this last week. Last week, the Florida problem is that they they don't count the cases when they're reported like everybody else. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, they backdate them. So it always looks like they're, they're declining because the, you know, the, the cases that are going to be backdated to today haven't been reported yet. So the, that skews the whole national average. Yeah. I mean, if that's total. consistent, I wouldn't think it'd make a huge difference, but the, na the national case rate, it now seems clear has been on a plateau. For a little more than two weeks, more or less, which means that you would hope that the death rate would start to drop. But meanwhile, or at least level off. But meanwhile, there is something that demands explanation. I mean, I brought it up before, but I wish somebody would would try to uh, figure it out, which is that, um, you know, our uh, our per capita, you know, case rate 
never got as high in the Delta phase as Britain's did, and yet our death rate is currently uh, almost three times as high as Britain's ever got. I mean, that's just a big difference. And I haven't heard anybody explain. We, we, you and I have come up with theories. Could be their, their, their universal health care. Could be that they're, they're counting more cases. You I know, don't think it's that. Well, uh, or it could be their vaccination rate, but I just, it, it, the difference is so striking. I, I would think I, it's the vax rate and, and climate and obesity. Oh, is American obesity a lot? We have we have mo- more comorbidities. I, I hadn't thought of that. Is that true? I suspect that's right. It's hard to believe we're fatter than some of the Brits I've seen. But I was going to say those fish and I chips catch are. up with you. You know, have you ever had have you ever had fried bread in Britain? Do you know what that is? No, I had this. I had this weird milk bread pudding they serve for dessert. Oh, that's compared to fried bread. That's like <laughs> vitamin D. I mean, the fried bread is like I was I, I woke up. I was staying at uh, it was either I guess it was uh, either Oxford or Cambridge. It was like a dining hall. This is about 15 years ago. And at breakfast, the uh, you go by with the tray. The lady says, would you like some fried bread? I thought she meant toast. And she gives me the stuff. It almost killed me. It's like, it's like deep K- fried. It's, it's like, like Kentucky it, fried bread. Yeah, it's like Kentucky fried bread. It's unbelievable. Don't if you ever go there and somebody says you want fried bread. It sounds great. It's like picking off the the breading and not eating the chicken. It tasted. I like the taste. The taste was great. It tasted great. But you know, uh, it's three four years off my life expectancy right there. I don't there. think so. Haven't they discovered fat is good for you? Probably. It's about time for that. I guess. I mean, health news is just a nonstop slate pitch, you know. It's like, but it, but they all turn out to be true. It um, did you? I didn't realize you need fat in order to digest protein. We talked about this. If you if you're if you're in the woods and you kill uh, an elk, you and eat it, you're going to die because the elk it doesn't have enough fat on the, on the meat, and you need the fat to digest it. Wait, if you eat lean meat, you'll die. <laughs> If you eat nothing but lean meat, you'll die. There is, it's a, it's like a protein overload thing. You huh. die. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So, um, I'll guard against that. Uh, I've looked at fat differently since I heard that. I've looked at fat. Um, so the, um, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's it. all I have to say about California. Well, let's talk about, do you have something else you want to talk about? No, except that they, you know, California, it's, it's going to take them 35 more days to count the vote. I mean, they, they've, they have so much, uh, direct mail vote. The votes have a week. They uh, still have a few days to arrive, uh, and still be counted. You have until a week after election day for your ballot to arrive in the mail. So they, they don't get around counting them, uh, uh, for a long time. And that itself is a problem because you don't get a quick result at an election. I think. There, there's some sort of civic good in having reasonably timely results that is being overlooked in California. They only that counted seventy six percent of the ballots. That was a public service announcement. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm as you know, they're still counting votes in my race. <laughs> well, keep hope alive, brother. I'm. I'm I haven't given up on you. I haven't given up on you. What year was that? Twenty ten. You never know. Um, the the person I I I've run against has served her term and left office, <laughs> but you know we can reinstate me. I think I think that's a good that'd be a good. I could start a a march a march for Mickey to reinstate this now, that's election that was an idea. stolen from me. In the million Mickey march. <laughs> Only people with Mickey are allowed. Exactly. And it starts off, it starts off at Disneyland. You're not far from Disneyland. And you got all these like Mickey Mouse, uh, hats and stuff at the beginning. This is killer shit, man. We can get you in the Senate, Mickey. The Mickey Mouse hats are sort of a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that for my election? Oh, totally. You know, you know what? Seriously, your big failure was you did not at any point call me and say, Bob, give me the best advice you've got on how to win a Senate campaign. I had so many good ideas. I mean, the the Mickey Mouse hat thing was like number 17, okay? I don't think you, you didn't have that back then, but uh, it's a oh, really good idea. you didn't ask. You didn't ask. It's a really good idea. 
The um the the big problem candidates like Elder face, or it certainly can't. I mean, Elder was a, a reasonable candidate, but the candidates like me face is they ask you, are you in it to win or are you just in it to make a point? And of course, you have to answer you're in it to win, and then and you, you feel like a fucking idiot. But your big mistake was, and this is how they justified keeping you out of the debates, right? The, you, they you said what debates. It, didn't you make some blunder? I mean, it's I know it's hard to remember amid all the blunders you made to isolate just one. But <laughs> didn't you during this campaign say, frankly, I'm not planning to win. I just want to make a point. Didn't they use that they to use exclude that you the, from yeah, the debates they would have or found something? something else. I don't I mean, know. If, if you're polling, if, if if you have, you know, if you, your numbers are as low as mine were, I think they uh, they say you're not a serious candidate and they weren't they weren't going to allow a debate anyway. So. Uh, that wasn't a big, that, that wasn't the big, that was a blunder that I, that I gave sort of two, I gave, I wavered on the I'm in it to win it message. And you can't waver. You have to just lie. <laughs> say, that was beyond, teeth. that was beyond wavering when you said, you know, I'm not in it to win it. That was, that wasn't like a momentary vacillation. That was the denial I, of any intention whatsoever if, to if, actually if, prevail in the election. If I'm Larry Elder, I get, I get to ask for a mulligan. So, yeah. um, there's uh, Millie. Mark Millie. Thoroughly saved modern us, Millie. Saved uh, us from war with China. I, well, well, now, okay, so if, if there's anybody that hasn't been paying attention, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, I guess things were getting weird around. I don't know if was, this was right before the election or right after, but Trump was clearly getting wacko. And China, there there were specific things we had done, I guess, that had China worried. It was before the election. Worried. Key it point, was, it was before the election. It was okay. in October. Okay. Okay. But, the, but China was concerned uh i think we'd actually done some things that were interpreted as provocations but anyway uh millie uh apparently communicated with his chinese counterpart and said hey trust me we're not going to start a war if we do i'll give you a heads up <laughs> that's my favorite part if we are going to invade your country uh i'll give you a heads up well the, the heads up part is the is the you know the, it, it was basically it wasn't it, it was not it was the deep state it was approved by the deep state. It was okay. So the only person who didn't know was the president. Okay, as so it, it should it's, be. It's evidence. It's evidence for the deep state acting against an elected president. President. It's not evidence of Milley acting on his own. No, and he in was, fact, he was, had the buy-in of the of the Secretary of Defense, right? I think he was asked to by the Secretary of Defense, who arguably is connected to an elected official. Since I mean, that, Trump that's it. why all this bullshit about how but, he, Milley should resign is bullshit. He was operating and keeping with a chain of command. His superior wanted him to do it. He did. Well, it. the problem is this heads up business. Did you know we give them a heads up? They launch a fr first strike and kill millions of Americans. Okay, that's not something you want your generals doing. And I doubt Esper said, "Okay, you can agree." To give him a heads up if we launch an attack. Uh, plus, you know, as somebody pointed out, why would the Chinese believe if you're a Chinese game theorist, you're probably thinking that this is just a, another tactic to lull us to sleep while the, while they prepare their first strike without telling us. And Millie's going to go, oh, I forgot. I forgot to say we were going to nuke, you know, Beijing. Um, so it's uh, I, I think that was freelancing and I think he's vulnerable there. Uh, also, I mean... To, 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 to the whole case against Milley is even before then, when there was a he, he had um, not before then, he seems obviously to have been prime. It's not like uh, it's not like Esper tell, tells him and he says, oh, I guess Trump is a kook and we have to call. He, he obviously thought Trump was a kook all along. He was it was Damn a pre-existing mindset on his part when there was a rally after the election uh, on November 10th. This is way before January 6th. He starts throwing around words like brown shirts and fascists and Reichstag fire. And this is, we're not going to let the Nazis win and that sort of thing. Obviously, he has, he, he has Trump hatred on his brain or well, Trump wait. skepticism. And it might be justified. We don't know what Trump okay, was like. There in you private, go. Well, but, no, we know enough for, for concern to be warranted. Jesus. You saw what happened but, after the election. He, he, you know, he all but refused to leave the White House. I mean, I mean, you know, he he, he was willing to subvert the Constitution and he didn't destroy democracy. To leave the White House. He went I said crazy he all after but, the election. I said he all but refused to leave. Uh, he was but. totally willing to subvert the Constitution, and he tried. I mean, come on, the the, the skepticism. I, I, I want to see his emails before he clearly he clearly 
disgraced himself and went crazy after the loss. Uh, well, but, doesn't that um, kind of doesn't that kind of vindicate people who three weeks earlier said, "Hey, this guy seems crazy." Wouldn't you say that Millie was kind of on the right track? But this idea that the, the this idea in 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 the press accounts that an old friend called him and alerted him that that Trump was going to subvert the government. First, who is his old friend? And was it Nancy Pelosi? He seems to have been talked to Pelosi talked to Pelosi a lot. It was probably not Nancy Pelosi, but what you know what in that sort of opened his eyes no he was he he was uh he was woke to trump earlier than that well more power to him uh again i mean uh, first of all you're talking as if they uh, were they talking about a nuclear attack i i mean that's the way that's the word you've used but i i haven't read the, this stuff that closely but i assumed uh that he meant if we're going to launch a conventional attack uh, we'll let you know, and then and the idea is then you don't overreact. You do something, to, uh, some token proportionality, and we call it a day, presumably. And you and you don't think that your homeland is truly imperiled and launch some kind of massive assault. Do we tell them? Do we tell them where this attack is going to happen? I don't know, but I would say, look, we had a president who I'm sorry to say. I think justifies this kind of concern at the highest levels of the military. We well, did. It, 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 it justifies paranoia, but keep in mind, he didn't do any of this. He didn't launch an attack. He didn't start any wag the dog wars to uh, to uh, well, distract. Uh, the, the assassination distract and, of Suleimani was. And, sorry, the, I think the assassination of Suleimani was extremely reckless. Uh, personally, violation of international law, uh, seemingly a little, you know, almost whimsical. Uh, you know, pissed off Iraq, which. God knows Trump didn't have the presence of mind to anticipate. Um, and, and so I, I just think he was a, he was a very dangerous guy. He, he's, you know, he's, 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 uh, kind of deranged. I mean, his, his last minute, his last minute power grab was trying to get us out of Afghanistan. It was crazy, but it was not directed at starting a war. It was directed at any war. Well, he had that impulse. He, he had both impulses, which, it, but, but, uh, he was a dangerously I, impulsive I, person, I think. I, I, I hadn't heard, I, I, the, the, this conventional attack business is interesting. I, I hadn't heard that. It hasn't been in the press. I thought, and Fallows talks about, Jim Fallows in his piece, Defending Millie talks about it. I thought this was a fail safe situation where, uh, Henry Fonda as president allows the Russians a proportional right. attack to our attack on one of their cities, which means they get to take out New York. Right, I forget. Uh, I forget which one of them accidentally launched the attack, but who, and whichever, then we la accidentally launched the attack, and then we let. And so the we Russians call them and say, "Look, sorry, but this thing's on the way. We can't stop it. You, you get to take out what New York or Washington? New York, New York. New York. Yeah, Maybe naturally, because Henry Fonda's in Washington. <laughs> Maybe Washington too, uh, and a city to be named later. Yeah, um, uh, I, I, I always thought it was in the in a nuclear context, but that's a good point. So I don't know. The uh anyway, again, if he had sign off from the Secretary of Defense, there is no issue. I mean, that's the chain of command. Well, I want I, I I want to see this sign off for the heads up. I don't think it's there. But could be. I, I honestly and I also want to know how crazy Trump was in private because you heard stories, people would say, Well, what I've heard is way beyond what's been, you know, how in public. And if you remember, Nixon was a lot crazier in private than we knew at the time. He was yeah. always ordering nuclear strikes, and Henry Kissinger would would tell the Secretary of Defense, "Don't mm -hmm. don't act on this one. If you get any orders, oh, totally, tonight, totally. don't act on this one." And I I guess I'm glad he did that. Although I actually think Nixon would be much less likely to do something crazy than than Trump. Um, I mean, well, who did the wag? What was the wag the dog war? There must have been one that was somebody started. Uh, I forget wait, what it was. There was a, you mean a war started solely for domestic political purposes? Yes. There was the Mayaguez attack under Gerald Ford. There was Bill Clinton lobbed some cruise missiles at a pharmaceutical factory. In Sudan. In Sudan. There was yeah. J Jimmy Carter did something before the uh -oh. Iowa primary that was considered wag the Well, well wait. Was Clinton's time to distract attention from Monica Lewinsky? Is that the idea? Because, I mean, succumbing to domestic political pressure and starting war that way, that's standard procedure. I mean, that happens all the time. No, I think, no it wasn't that. 
Wag, wagging the dog is when there's a totally separate domestic issue, like right. like Bush invading, like Bush nabbing Noriega to get like uh, a tax cut or whatever. It was either a distraction or it was an upcoming election. It was not. Uh, there weren't there weren't there weren't people demanding that we attack a uh, Sudanese pharmaceutical factory. Yeah, um, uh, I don't think. So I don't uh, know, but uh, Millie Mil- Mil- just. He, in general, he seems a bit of a kook, you know? Well, he's kind of been on, but, you know, I mean, he, I, I thought maybe, you, you know, you remember the, I mean, how much of what you're calling his kookiness predates his famous, you know, showing up in Lafayette Square with combat fatigues on next to Trump? As I recall, he actually had combat fatigues on, which is yes. odd. Um I had, I had thought that everything you might consider, uh, subsequent, that you might consider craziness was after that as a kind of a makeup call, because he took so much shit for that, including from within the military, as he should, I think. Um, and, uh, but I, so I don't, a, I'm not aware of his record before that. Interpreting it as a makeup call. Yeah, I would think. Uh, but, uh, the, the, saying he was deeply hurt by the criticism and, but, you know, he's, he's flaky either way. I mean, He's flaky. He runs around with Trump in fatigues, and then he turns against Trump's both excessive. Also, is his stewardship of Afghanistan especially impressive? I don't think so. Uh, he, you mean the withdrawal? He didn't and warn people about what actually happened, and he uh, it, it sort of left Bagram in a huff when Biden ordered him to. Uh, it seemed, uh, and that was probably stupid. Uh, the weird thing about Afghanistan is the story which I haven't followed up on that Biden was really alone in standing up to everybody. Even Blinken yep. flipped at the end after going to some European confab and all the Europeans saying, well, you should really not bug out of Afghanistan completely. You should maintain a small presence. And, and he actually, you know, he actually had his mind changed at the last minute, according to this report. Well, I would, I would guess he was always squishy. I mean, Blinken is, is definitely part of the blob by, by nature. So is Jake Sullivan, I think. And, and Biden is the only, the only guy in the administration who I think feels otherwise. He, he has always had a little bit of an anti-blob streak. By the way, as you noted, uh, the blob is really getting its day in the sun. I think the term is becoming a true part of the vocabulary. It Yesterday, is. there was a piece in the New York Times about the term. By Sarah um, Lyle. By Sarah Lyle. Um, whom you know, whom I met once. Always wedding, funny. Decades ago. What? But, uh, they, she sort of implied that it was, she had people saying it was, uh, it was too imprecise. And if it was invented by Ben Rhodes, who is certainly part of the blob, uh, it, uh, uh, it, it, it is imprecise if it just applies to things that Ben Rhodes disagrees with. Well, I think it was invented by Ben Rhodes, certainly by him or Obama. Um, I agree that. He's got one foot in the blob, but he's, he's a lot less blobby than a lot of people. There, there is an, he definitely has not extracted himself from the blob, and I'm not sure he totally understands what f- it is that keeps him a part of the blob. And may, and I keep thinking I should write a piece about how he is part of the blob. One foot in the blob is a good headline or a good country song. One foot in the blob. Yeah. 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 We um, can develop that in the parrot room. I'm going to write that down. Um, <laughs> The uh, uh so pair um, room, blah. there is this weird thing with the vaccine. Uh, wait, can I say before we oh, get sorry. back to okay. vaccine, just Go quickly ahead. on the China military front, the, there was this this apparently fairly big deal where the U.S. is providing nuclear powered submarines to Australia, which really pisses off China and really pisses off France because. Well, France, France lost a 90, 90 billion dollar contract. I've heard contrasting figures. It's always in the tens of billions, but the, uh, um, yeah, there was a contract and, and I don't know, according to Australia, I think France was kind of late and there were all these delays. So screw you. But, uh, I have a couple of questions. I actually did a short thing about this in my, uh, non zero newsletter, which we'll go out today. But, um, one question. I mean, first of all, there's some reason to believe that the timing of the announcement is a reaction to the pressure Biden is under because of the Afghanistan withdrawal. You know, he needs to, to prove his manhood. I, I don't mean they cooked this up for that purpose. So he's, he's wagging the submarine. 
He's wagging the submarine. Um, I mean, I mean, the, the, the negotiation of this predates this. It, it just has the hallmarks of something that they rushed out the announcement on. And David Ignatius in the Post had a line about how they wanted to get it out now because of the Afghanistan blowback. Um, but the other thing is like, just think about the, the game, the strategic game theory of this. The idea is, you know, you kind of show your manhood and that's going to keep China in check and they're not going to get too adventurous in their region. But the thing about this is the nuclear submarines aren't going to show up for more than a decade. So if they really are going to exert any kind of constraining effect on China's behavior, doesn't that incentivize China to do any adventurism now before the, I mean, it's like, you know, like take Taiwan now before these nuclear powered submarines. I mean, I'm not saying these submarines are that huge a deal, but in general, uh, I, apparently they're not nothing. They they have these, even though they're not nuclear armed, and maybe especially because they're not nuclear armed, in a way that makes it more credible that you could use use them uh, to deliver force. But um, but apparently they really bother China. So if you're China, uh, as just a general principle, if somebody says, "Okay, we've got all these weapons." Uh, that China is going to have to really worry about, and they're coming in ten years. If you're China, don't you just go ahead and take Taiwan or something, or take more islands, or do what you're going to do? It does seem to have the per- a perverse incentive to, like, um, you know, like a heads up from Milley, it encourages swift action. Uh, the, uh, um, the other incentive, of course, is on our part. We can beat China now, uh, so it's an artist that has to start a war now if we're going to have a war rather than wait until they're even stronger. Uh, I'm sure the Chinese are aware of that, and that's part of the uh, beat source in what, of their beat paranoia. In what sense? And in, 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 assuming it doesn't go nuclear, in what sense can we beat them? Occupy China? I don't. Want, I don't think we can do that. Um, no, we can't occupy China, but we could. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, how, in, in, in an that? isolated naval battle, we would prevail, I think. But then at the end of the day, they're still there in that region. And it's very easy for them to get more ships to the site. And their Navy has grown rapidly. Um, we could uh, we could take Beijing and be welcomed, welcomed as liberators. As liberators. I think we would be. I think people yeah. underestimate. How much warmth there is around the world for occupying American troops, you know? It is true that, as Fallows notes in his Substack, the Chinese military is relatively untested in combat. And uh, I remember the, them getting their ass kicked by the North Vietnamese. So they don't have like a huge track record of victory. Not that we have one either, but we are much more experienced than they are. Yeah. Um, but, you know... At the end of the day, and unless you sabotage their economic development, they're going to have the power to assert force in their immediate region um, in in the long run. And so I don't know. I don't know exactly what that gives you. I, I would recommend just kind of working things out with them and agreeing on rules of the road if that's possible. I think the, I think we should keep channels of communication open. That was that was that was Millie's. Charge from Esper, apparently, according to keep channels of communication. Keep open. channels of communication open. Can I get a cup of coffee and then I'll be back with a trenchant analysis of Biden's speech yesterday? I'm not sure you need one because about four minutes ago your volume got a lot louder. I think you got either you got a burst of energy or like you clicked no, something. I, I left my coffee in the kitchen. I gotta go get it. Okay, so what? I'm gonna talk about what should wait. Well, let's agree on my soliloquy. What am I gonna talk about? It's only gonna last ten seconds. I could I would have had the coffee already. You're not going to be able to do this in 10 seconds. Okay, that'll be the G- thing. I'll count. do the count. Give me a, give me 10 seconds. Okay, okay we will see. We Go. will see. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. No fucking way he's getting here. 3, 2, 1. Bzzz. Mickey's not here. Mickey lost the bet. Um, I'm doing a victory dance. That wasn't 10 seconds, Mickey. He hasn't put his earbuds in. He hasn't gotten the bad news yet. He still thinks victory was in, is within reach. It's not. It's not, as he's about to find out. Sorry, Mickey, you didn't make the 10 second deadline. <laughs> uh, yeah, I knew, I knew I'd uh, blown it when I saw how full the cup of coffee was. I didn't want to spill it, you know? Do you, 
an important question is how long does it take the caffeine to reach your brain? I think in my case, it's really Ten close seconds. to an, no, it's close to an hour for me. No, I, I found myself getting all fuzzy. And if I, maybe it's just a, it's you a, know, pav- a you're getting the, like psychological, you know, suggestion you're having that, the Pavlovian response to the taste of the coffee. You're having so you some kind of anticipatory would, response. Decaf would do the same thing? I don't think so. In the short run, yes, but not in the long run. You drink the decaf, think- and an hour later you fall asleep. Now you're not going to fall asleep in an hour, but you would feel the same now if it were decaf. I actually had a – speaking of falling asleep, I mean, I had, I, I drove I, – I was incredibly exhausted two days ago. I got back from a long drive, and uh, I was so tired – you know when you're – I'd never had this before, and I was worried I was going insane. You know how before you – right before you fall asleep, you have a chain of thought that's a little crazy, and you sort of go down a rabbit hole, and you departed from reality? Well, wait. You mean and, it's like the incipient part of a dream, or it's more yeah, like you're like actually the incipient thinking part of a thoughts that get weirder and weirder? The, it, it's, well, it starts with a rational thought, and then it becomes the incipient part of a dream and gets weirder and weirder, and it's very detailed, Okay. Uh, Give us an example. Like you'd be buying. I. The weird thing is, it happened to me while I was awake and shopping, and I never fell asleep or was even close to falling asleep. But yet, I had the wacky train of thought. Well, and it seemed it was like I would be buying a a piece of fruit or something at the market, and the act of giving them the money or the credit card would say, "Oh, I remember this." There's this bank account balance I have, and I'm going to move this around here, and I'm going to go broke or something. And that that whole thing was all bullshit. Yet I had the thought, and I didn't fall asleep. There was like wait, these, wait, wait, wait a second. The thought was about like moving money around in a bank account in a way that some, actually had no connection to your actual life. It had some connection, but it was not not real. It was you know. What was the unreal part? Like the, like the, the amount of the money. The amounts were wrong. I wasn't moving the account. I wasn't about to go broke. I mean, this is a hypothetical. Uh huh. But it was it was as if uh, I was having glimpses of like an alternate reality that did was false, mm-hmm. and it was also a little like what would happen if you took away the reality meter from my brain, as LSD supposedly does. Mm-hmm. And it just frees all these id-like thoughts from control by the evil ego, super ego. And um, uh, anyway, it it was very troubling, it, and, and I was really, really tired. But it's never happened before, and I hope it will never happen again. This doesn't sound like anything to worry about. <laughs> um, um, but I, that you reminds think, me. Uh, this is why I don't take LSD. I'm going to have a fucking. That bad reminds trip. me. I, I, I'm trying to talk you into microdosing. Uh, so we'll talk about that in the parrot room. I'm going to continue my campaign um, negative microdose. Bi- um, Biden gave a speech. Yeah. Uh, promoting his uh, economic plans, and the two things I thought were interesting. One is, uh, he said, "This is an inflection point." You know, previously the rich were getting richer and all the money was flowing to the top and working people and people didn't, you know, and, and, and after this change, the, you know, and here he sort of subtly shifts from talking about the economy to the whole society is going to be fair to the growth is going to be equally distrib- distributed to everybody. And, and does anybody think Biden's bill is actually going to achieve this? I mean, I wrote a whole book saying that it was basically impossible, but, uh, uh, does anybody think Biden's budget, which is money for daycare, uh, preschool, uh, community college, and this child tax credit for dental coverage for and parents, Medicare, baby? What dental coverage and Medicare? Well, that I, even that is going to be transformative, and it's going to be a inflection point that makes America a much more equal society. The rich are going to stop getting richer. Even though the trends that force the rich to get richer are still there, well, the I mean, returns it, I to didn't skill, hear, et cetera. I didn't hear exactly what he said, but it sounds like it's within the the bounds of standard political exaggeration. I mean, but it's, li- it's like, sta- like no, we say this this isn't just any budget; this is a special budget because it's going to create this transformation, and the transformation is bullshit. So, well, well it seems most to be of you what normally politicians say, politicians say that. most of what politicians say is bullshit. Okay, so your defense of him is it's just bullshit. Yeah, don't worry. It's just it's just lies. Don't worry. Okay. No, um, I mean, look, it, it it is. 
uh, it is an unusual magnitude of stuff that could, in theory, help. I mean, like, you know, I, I really like the free community college thing because, I mean, I like it more than uh, Bernie Sanders' free college thing in a way because, you know, community colleges, I, I think, have a lot of, you know, kind of vocational focus and stuff. It, it's more like... uh what a lot of people need than than like a liberal arts degree is a practical matter. It, it it doesn't bother me. You know, most of the parts of the bill don't bother me if they got rid of the refundable child tax credit and the amnesty. I would be I would be a pro Biden Democrat. But the daycare thing is going to you know, it it gives the care not in institutions, but in homes. And it obviously they want to unionize the workers and. It's going to create this whole bureaucratic edifice that might be a disaster. Mm -hmm. The family, the paid leave is 12. This is from a Betsy McCoy article today, and I've learned not to trust oh, Betsy God. McCoy. I was going to say, you're going to trust but her. She, she wrote that some, bullshit piece that killed Clinton's health care thing for the New Republic. It was bullshit, but then I decided it wasn't such bullshit. That, um, you should have stopped before that second thought. <laughs> um, the uh, she, 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 Anyway, she said that. Never mind. Let's not get into it. But the, um, uh, she said it's twelve weeks every year, uh, paid leave for illnesses just on your say so. Okay, twelve weeks a year. That's like three out of twelve months a year. An employee is supposed to like tolerate their employees just being absent. That seems like a lot. I'll bet you 12, anything if you look at the weeks fine after, print. Twelve weeks every three years, maybe. I'll bet you anything if you look at the fine print. She's misleading you. That's what she does. I checked it out on the web, and and I and I it was hard to find in a suspicious way. They don't really want you to find it out. That's per year, but it seems to be twelve weeks per year. I think she's right on that. I could, yeah, she could be. I like I say, don't trust her. I'm um, paranoid about mail-in ballots and Betsy McCoy. That shows how even-handed I am. That's why America turns to you in moments like this. Right now, and the second interesting thing about the speech is that he had this crazy. It was crazy but seemingly sort of appealing take on inflation, which is, what do we care about inflation? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, your, your prices aren't going to go up for, for elder care, for daycare, for prescription drugs. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep those prices low. So we really don't have to worry about inflation. Well, that's crazy. Of course we have to worry about inflation. There are a hundred things that he's not, a hundred things that he's not, aren't subsidized. Did by he the say government. you don't have to worry about inflation? Oh God! Do I, I mean, he, well, he yeah. If you're going to quote him and, okay, and, and say okay, it's I'll wrong, go. you got to get the quotes right. Jeez. I no. I mean, I, I I'm I'm uh, giving you a a paraphrase of what he said, but I did look for it and it it is there. So I will now find it. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like politicians talk bullshit. I it's uh, we, we have to judge them by another standard, like. But why does he argue is just argue it's not going to be inflationary? Um, sounds like that's close to what he did say. He said, "My Republican friends talk a lot about inflation, but if you want to talk about actually lowering the cost of living for people in this country, my plan does just that." And he talks about elder care and child care costs. Oh, that's totally pay care standard, costs. legit political rhetoric. But and and it, by the way, what I would say if I were him is they they uh, say they're worried about inflation, but they want to take away our capacity to raise revenue to pay for programs, and that's inflationary. If you if you don't pay your way, that's what I'd be saying. And that's why, really, you know, I think you and I agree. I should be the man in the White House, but I'm not. Um, so God, we it's gone we, to your head, Bob. What what's going on in my head? All you the think you should be all, in the White House. Uh, well, you thought you should be in the Senate, which is crazier. I think it's about a dead heat. Uh, um, senators don't have to actually do anything. I guess people in the White House don't either. Um, I had a huge pundity point to make uh, based on this. Oh, hey, don't worry about inflation. We'll just send you some more checks. Uh, okay, pundity attitude. is good. Do it. Um, which is, uh, can you still see me? Because I can no longer see you. I'm here. Trust me. I can see you. 
Okay. Hi. Um, you know, you talk about, uh, uh, Scott Winship had a post where, uh, it's very important that, uh, you know, that, uh, the educational deficits at the lower end of the pyramid be corrected and the liberal attitude is, oh, don't worry about it. We'll just increase the child tax credit to compensate for any shortfall. Uh, don't worry about the erosion of the work ethic. We'll just send more checks, uh, to compensate for the shortfall of work. Uh, and now don't worry about inflation. We'll just send checks to compensate for rising prices and to subsidize goods. So basically the, the new liberal paradigm is we'll send more checks. Don't worry about it. I thought that was the old liberal paradigm. It was the old money liberal paradigm. Oh, it, oh, oh not the Mickey the neoliberal Party. paradigm. I see. Sorry? Not the, it, it was the, not the Mickey neoliberal paradigm. It was the well, old money. Well, there was always debate liberal. in the Democratic Party between. Yeah, but you got, you lost. You lost. It's over. You lost that one. You should just well, join we'll the see. Republican Party. We'll, we'll lost, see. They've, you they've lost. Been, you lost. There have been encouraging signs among Democrats, uh, like Joe Manchin, that he understands the work issue. Uh, Joe if Manchin. You re- man. If you read closely some of the accounts of what's going on in Congress, there, various p- Congress people, like I think Kevin Brady, who's a powerful Democratic congressman, who uh, has grave doubts about sending checks willy nilly to families that don't work. Uh, and so, you know, depending on what Manchin and Cinema actually hold out for. Uh, you could modify that provision and the money liberals will not have won. I don't, I have no problem with a child tax credit or even an expanded child tax credit as long as it doesn't go to families who don't work. Uh, so that's the obvious possible solution and you could base it on prior work. Uh, efforts. That's not, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work within the Democratic Party. Are you crazy? It's, what, it's, you, it, 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 it's a compromise between Joe Manchin. It, it, first, it's the way the law is now. Yeah. We'll be increasing it. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's a negotiation between the Democratic Party and the moderates in the Democratic Party. And why shouldn't that be an obvious compromise? Uh, because they as don't I control said, the Congress. They have because as the I Congress said, and, neoliberalism within the Democratic Party, your kind of neoliberalism, it, it, uh, it, is, it, is it, it, not alive and well. It's not going to win a vote. In the within the Democratic Party, but it, that doesn't cut any ice. It has to win a vote in Congress, and if you add the moderate if you, if Democrats you add to the Republicans, Republicans to, they to, are a majority. Yeah. I just think you lose a lot of Democrats when you start doing that. But I don't know. What do I know? I don't pay attention to politics. You know what I do pay attention to, Mickey? And I want to emphasize this. I pay attention to how long we've been recording. And it's now been about an hour, which means that it's about time to adjourn and go into the parrot room. And whether or not have, you agree, and I know you always resist this, I whether or not you it. agree, I think I, we um, should pat ourselves on the back because what happened this week, Mickey, that's relevant to the parrot room? Um, this is a test. Uh, mm, um, are you are you having like swirling thoughts about moving money in your bank account? And no, I, the I, numbers don't make the, sense. There's the Durham indictment. There's uh There's nothing we can't talk about in the parrot room. That's uh, the we beauty can talk of the room. In the parrot room. There's uh Wait, who is Durham? Who is Durham? Durham is a special prosecutor uh who's the 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 Republicans uh set at investigating Russia how the Russia scandal came out and wrongdoing within the Department of Justice. So he's the he's oh, the oh, special yeah, yeah. prosecutor who Republicans hope succeed and he did indict a Democratic lawyer for Basically, uh, spreading, uh, this story about the Alpha Bank having a special connection to the Trump campaign. Remember Frank Four wrote about yeah, that? Yeah, Frank, Slate I was going to say that, made a big deal that of it. Frank Four piece in Slate, uh, early yeah. on in the resistance, as right. I recall, right? And then right. what I, was, like- was saying there were these nefarious, uh, messages between a Russian computer and the Trump campaign or something. And then almost immediately there was a pretty good takedown in the intercept arguing that, you know, with all due respect, I like Frank, but arguing that he was out of his depth, didn't understand. And apparently, uh, the intercept won that. Is that what you're saying? Well, and there, and there were, in, there were, there, there were people sort of techie nerds in various institutions who had that point of view that it, this is all bullshit. Yeah, they, they're, they're misreading these uh, th- these communications between the Alpha Bank and what turned out to be uh, 
people doing promotional campaigns for Trump hotels. It wasn't actually Trump Campaign Central. Yeah. Uh, but it was pushed by this lawyer who was being, who then billed the Hillary Clinton campaign, who told, who allegedly told the FBI that he didn't represent, uh, you know, he was implied that he was just a public spirited citizen. Uh, and it, in fact, he was acting as a lawyer, allegedly as a lawyer for Hillary, spreading this Alpha Bank, uh, rumor to the FBI and they sort of adopted it, uh, or, or took it much more seriously because of that. Uh, so, you know, if it's true, I hope he, they should throw the book at him. But, um, uh, the, it's, it still does leave him. I, I've now come back to the position that there is a mystery as to why Trump was so adoring of Putin. It's not just that he wanted to build a hotel in Moscow, which was my previous theory. Uh, so. You think there's still a mystery? I think there's still a mystery. I still want to know what the hell we was going on. We can talk about there. that in the parrot room. Um, I'm not sure I have any non-obvious thoughts, but I have thoughts. Um, but the answer to the question that you dodged, what big thing happened this week with respect to the parrot room is Mickey, after months of tireless toil, we passed the 1,000 patron mark. There are now um, more than a thousand parrot room patrons. I every don't... week, every week it's been four yards and a cloud of dust. You know, but we didn't give up. They said it couldn't be done. You remember all the people who said it couldn't be done, Mickey? Remember all those people? Where are they now? Are they laughing? Are they smiling? No, they're miserable because they were wrong and we were right. Um, no, that's very gratifying, but, um, we're still no, uh, Chapo Trap House. No, but you know, you're right. We are not, but you know, are they happy? Are they happy? That's my question about them. Did money make them happy? They've got all this money. Are they happy? No. Mickey, we're happy. Okay? We're happy where we are at a thousand, although we would like to be at two thousand, and that's our next goal. So wait. So look, right. we we have to we should I think we should transition into the parrot room. Um in part because I need to post my newsletter quickly. I need a little ah, now we're 15 getting... minute allowance in between now and the parrot room taping. Um, but also there's so much to talk about in the parrot room. I mean, we well, need to get there. You want to, you have, know, uh, you want to hear what there is? Go ahead. What do you got? I have some things. This is at patreon.com slash parrot room. Uh, needless to say. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, uh, all these revelations about Facebook whitelisting people so they can, you know, so they, 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 they get, they get permission to spread what Facebook would, you know, cancel somebody for. But if they're oh, big I enough VIPs, that, yeah. they get in. Yeah. Um, I heard, uh, I want to talk about somebody said, well, if there's some, some liberal had a big retrospective on the Dixie chicks being canceled. Well, I think the Dixie Chick cancellation is different from regular cancellation. Uh, I wanted to reopen the Ezra Klein versus Jonathan Cohen thing from last week just because it it's very painful for all of us. So why not go through it again? You know um, my position on Ezra, right? Sorry? You know my position on Ezra? It's the finest American you've ever met. He is a god among men. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't realize I, I heard it. An interesting interview, uh, not great between Scott Galloway, the dog, and an expert on loneliness that had some facts about loneliness that I didn't know. Um, uh, I, I, I started to go down the rabbit hole of the Las Vegas shooting. Mm hmm. And it's a big fucking rabbit hole, but so Maybe. I want to give like a, a, um, a preliminary report on on what's the problem with uh, the official lone gunman theory. Okay, so we'll just see a rabbit hole trailer kind of in the pair room. Yeah, um, and bizarrely, that's all I have. That's a lot. Now, what I'd like to talk about. Oh, and I want to dump Trump, but I don't know quite how to do it. <laughs> it's a little late, dude. Yeah. Uh, the um. So, first of all, our crusade to get you to use a dating app continues. You were more receptive than I thought last week in the pair room. I think we can close the deal this week. I have specific ideas about how to proceed. Next step. Do they involve plastic surgery? Mm, I 
there are things that are that I think I'm going to insist on, and there are things I'm going to suggest are possibilities, and it's possible that's in one of those or the other. So you're going to be my coach. I am your uh, I am your your dating app life coach. Yes. No. No. Th- that's a great thing. Is that commenters in the parrot room are chiming in with very constructive advice. Oh my god! Yeah, if I rely yeah. on the commenters, I'll never get laid again. Uh, there's so many places I could go with that that it's just <laughs> I'm going to move on to the next item. <laughs> so we will also – I'm going to say a little something about the last week's U.S. Open tennis. Um, we should talk about, you know, Elizabeth Holmes is on trial, you know. I haven't uh, followed that, have you? A little bit, a little bit. Okay. I, I have a little bit to say, you know, she, for the uh, – she's indicted for fraud with the – what's the name of her company? I guess, I, you know. Fair the, enough. See, you know more than you thought, the blood testing company. Um, the uh, – it's because of the coffee box. It's the coffee. It's working. Um, the uh, oh, we said we're going to talk about Trump and the mystery of Trump's attra- attraction to Putin, which I don't think is such a mystery. Um, really? Okay, I'm interested in hearing that. I I, I want to talk a little anti blob strategy because because okay. there is you know there are people who are in the anti blob insurgency who don't like the term don't think we could talk like that i just think you know i just think they're wrong um keep it blob was originally a a, a phrase that william bennett used about the education establishment is that right yeah so it's it's there are a lot of blobs huh if you work in washington you you realize that there are blobs everywhere washington is blobs yeah um, and I guess that's about it. That's you, a fair amount. You don't want to talk about Nicki Minaj? Am I pronouncing it right? Who is Nicki Minaj? She's a pop singer who didn't take the vax because she said a cousin of hers in Trinidad took it and his balls swelled and his wife canceled. Oh, his uh, yeah, I fiance caught. fiance canceled their engagement and he's impotent. Nicki Minaj. Balls I don't think we have much to say about swelled. that. But. I'm writing this down. Uh. Um, yeah, I, I did catch wind of that story, um, and I didn't really have any thoughts about it. I'm, I mean, my main thought about it was it's wrong to disrespect uh, anti-vaxxers. I think it's good that Biden gave an out, which is uh, weekly testing. I have a thought. I have a way to I have a way to blame the resistance for anti-vaxxers. I'll do that in the parrot room. Okay. Um, it's kind of obvious, but uh, now there's a chance we'll not get to all of this, I guess. But we're gonna try. God damn it, because that's the kind of guys we are. Determination is what got us to a thousand patrons, and we're not gonna let go of that attitude now, are we, Mickey? Um, no. You, you're, no. You're, say no. You're, you maybe you should be my motivational coach. I think I need that too. Say no. We're not going to let go of the attitude. No. Okay. Nothing can stop us now. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So We're we will be like Mark Milley striding across Lafayette Square. Precisely. No, not like that. No, we're <laughs> going to be like him calling China to avert World War. Okay. Let's be like that. Okay. See you in the uh, pair room. Okay. All right.